Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Work with Mark Schultz with North Star Commodity. And it ended up to be a mostly lower day in grain and livestock futures trade and really felt like a risk off day here today, Mark. And I know the crude oil market was down hard. Did that spill over or was there something else that triggered the sell off? I think the energy complex probably started this uh, slide to the downside in commodities because it's pretty much broad based. There wasn't much that really worked itself back to the plus side, a little bit with dairy. Uh, hogs kind of held a little bit okay, but the corn, the soybeans, the wheat market, and I granted the corn and the wheat started out firmer and then gave it all back at the end. And obviously, pretty good moves up on wheat and a lot of it having to do with the big export sales that have been announced by uh, from China, uh, giving that market a boost. And the fact that they're still holding a rather sizable short position in wheat and a huge short position in corn. So those are things to watch. But when it's all said and done at the end of the day, we still have to come up with some shortfall in production in South America in order to prop prices to the upside. Yeah. And a corn and wheat have had a good run. You mentioned the China business. And from a technical standpoint, we had kind of run up into some chart resistance. So maybe a little profit taking or was there some farmer selling there? I would think you'd see some farmer selling. Now, you know, just from last Monday till now, you moved that wheat market 80 to 90 cents higher in Chicago. Uh, well, probably 60 to 90 cents higher between Chicago, Kansas City wheat. Uh, and that's a pretty good move in a short, short period of time. Uh, on that market. So yeah, I could see where we got short term overbought, get a correction. And that's why I would still say in the bigger scope of things right now, watch to see if we can take out today's highs and wheat. When if we can get another rally back and take out today's highs, I would be an optimistic situation in my view for the wheat market. Okay. And you always say wheat has to go up for corn to to go up as well. And we've kind of had that case. Corn's been a follower of wheat here. And, you know, on its own, do you think there is enough fundamental reason for corn to go up unless we get a big problem in Brazil? Well, there, there's a couple of things that are that are stacked in the favor of why I'm trying to be a little bit more optimistic with the corn. And first of all, the wheat market has turned higher. Technically, we posted uh, daily key reversals last week in the wheat market, and we posted a weekly key reversal up in the wheat market uh, for both Chicago and KC wheat. Those are the favorable technical signs that look very good. And you get down to a price level, and then also seasonally you're getting into a level where you typically find some type of bottom and start working higher. Corn market, I think what's at least there's a couple of things on on the docket here that I that I like that is needs to be watched closely. The funds coming into this week are short a little over a billion bushels of corn, a billion. Uh, so it wouldn't take much if you could create a problem or a shortfall in crop conditions or crop elsewhere, and mainly in South America, as it uh, comes up. That's where the, the issue would have to be. If you get that, I could see where you could get short covering and purchasing coming back, which would could drive the corn market up. Corn export business actually has been pretty good. We're running about 20% right. above a year ago on the corn export. So that's not the problem at the present time. That's doing fine. We just need a shortfall in production. And South America, Central Brazil, Northern Brazil has been on a dry side. Beans got planted a little bit later than they desire. I think you're going to percentage wise, they're going to have less uh, corn acreage going in, Sapinha corn this year. But we're going to have to be somewhere to the tune of 10 15% less acres, in my view, of Safinia corn getting planted to at least give us some type of hope of a problem developing in Brazil. And some of the private estimates have already come down for Brazil on both corn and soybeans. Conab is supposed to come out with their numbers tomorrow, and we have WASDI on Friday. Will we get confirmation in either of those reports? Will likely come down some. Uh, USD will probably bring it down some, but I don't think they're going to drive it uh, down some six or seven million metric tons, uh, anything like that. Twos and threes possibly might get the four. But if you break it all the way down and just look at the pure fundamentals of that, I think right now we probably are seeing somewhere between four to six million metric ton decline in Brazilian bean crop. I think that's where the market's trading. I firmly believe if you're going to start seeing back to $14 beans, there has to be a shortfall in total in South American bean production of the tune of 10 to 15 million metric tons. So we still got another 5 to 8 million metric tons to take off this crop 
in order to get some type of a rally back in the bean market. Okay. Uh, we have, like I said, kind of worked in some of the private estimates in terms of a lower Brazilian uh, soybean crop. Now the market, is it looking ahead at some of these mid-December forecasts? Is that why the market is continuing to slide here? Is we're kind of just forecasting ahead and how problematic it is it that we close below $13 on Jan beans today? Well, you, you, on, the, on the January beans, you're going to have this support levels that are going to pop up about every 20 cents down. So closing below $13 probably opens a door that we go down to $12.85 area. That would be your next support level as it go through. Now on the top side, probably getting back to $13.30, $13.35, that might be about as good as we do there. Let's talk about the cattle market. Certainly an ugly day there today, Mark, with some new contract lows again, and we did have some lower cash. So was it that or just this continued and relentless fund liquidation? Well, it, uh, the cash has started to slip some. But if you look at it in the bigger picture, we got up to probably, what, 187 on cash cattle. We're down to about 171 today. So you've moved about $15, $17 lower. On the, on the futures. The box beat from the high to the low here is probably down around $13, $14. And the futures are down about $35 off of their high. So the futures obviously are anticipating that things are going to crash. This is rather significant decline. Uh, if I go back to 2014, the, the first slide to the downside was $25 from the high to the low. Then we had a 62% retracement back up and then proceeded to go down for the next year and a half after that. This one basically has been nothing but a straight shot down uh, on here. So if I looked at timing and things like this, I thought yesterday might have been a possible 55 day top to bottom. Uh, you might have put in a low. As far as weeks are concerned, next week will be 13 weeks on this entire slide when we peaked on September 19th, uh, 13 weeks down. Hopefully we get some type of a turn from there on the market and try to turn up. But it's basically been export business on beef down 20% for the year. Imports probably up 20, 25%. We need to change that flow in here. And uh, right now that has not happened at the present time. And we got to get down to where beef, we've lost demand. Let's no if, ands, or buts about it. We have lost demand. We got to go to a level of where we get it back. And as I said about a month ago, it'll go it'll go lower than you think before the demand comes back on beef. Hogs actually ended mixed on the day here, but I would say held up pretty well considering the lean hog index has not been able to find a bottom and the cash market or the cattle market was imploding. But where do we go from here? You don't have a lot of upside, do you? I don't know if we've got a lot of upside. I'm hoping that we don't go a lot lower. If you break down the hog market in general, total pork in the coolers is extremely tight uh, for this time of the year. So it's not that we've got a burdensome supply. What we do have a burdensome supply is the number of pigs coming to market. And that's likely to continue until we get through the month of January. Then we should start to see things slip a little bit lower. Weather has been phenomenal. I don't really hear much of anything as far as health problems. Yeah, so weights are up. Yeah, so the weights are going to start creeping up, and the same is going to happen with the cattle. I mean, you couldn't ask for any better weather than what we have right now here for uh, the, the early uh, onset of winter. Uh, it's been ideal conditions and steady uh, as it goes. So that's wonderful, but that's going to eventually start raising up the weight gains on here uh, on the animal units. So that, that's going to make it a little bit tough. What pork does have, at least on the bright side, not only do, are we tight on the uh, inventory of pork, I think we've got a little bit better domestic demand for the pork is picked up. It's still relatively cheap. It's still the cheapest product on the market. And uh, you're sitting out here with your export business actually doing better than a year ago. Almost every month this year uh, for this uh, calendar year, beef uh, pork exports have exceeded a year ago. And again, in the month of October, up 5.7% versus a year ago. So I can't blame it on that. Do have some issues in China. China's hog price is down to new lows for the year. I'm hearing rumblings of African swine fever cases on the rise. That may be a reason why China is pushing more hogs to the market sooner. Uh, but we're not going to get a lot of this export business coming out of China in pork or in beef for the short term. 
Yeah, we have definitely been hearing a lot about China recently. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Mark Schultz, North Shore Commodity. That is Markets Now.